building those systems, your sales and marketing systems, your office systems, your employee systems, that's when you're going to start to grow a real company, when you can start to delegate and bring people on and create the systems and automation that's going to make for an amazing customer experience. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name's Rick Nusky and on today's call, I'm on the line with Shane Whelan. How are you, Shane? I'm doing good, Rick. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. Now, we've been talking about the entrepreneurial journey and some of the things to be aware of. Now, before we jump into that, uh, for everybody who's on the show today, Shane is actually the owner of Pet Bitter and Pet Containment Services, and he has a wonderful story to tell about his journey as an entrepreneur and, and the five steps that you'd need to consider to stand out in your marketplace and continue to winning in your business. So Shane, um, welcome again to the show. Before we jump into the nuts and bolts of the core, I'd love to learn a bit, of, a little bit more about you, where you're located and how it came to be that you're doing what you're doing today. Well, I live in Milford, Michigan with my high school sweetheart, Emily, and I own a service business called Pet Containment that installs invisible fences and a software business called Pet Bitter that is a sales and bidding tool for pet service companies. And I love all things business. I've always been just really curious about interesting things and interesting people. And my whole life, I, I had thrown myself into things, sports and music and whatever. And once I got to be like a young adult, I didn't know what to do. And I, I remember driving to work I was working landscaping and I remember driving to work at seven in the morning, silently crying to myself because I just hated my life. And I felt like I was just meant for so much more. But when I started my business, you know, it consisted of me just driving around in my pickup truck with a shovel, trying to make it happen. You know, I had jobs that would take me two entire days. And um, that first year, I think we, I did like 14 grand in revenue. You know, I didn't know what I was doing here in Michigan having three months off to kind of like regroup and recalibrate. Uh, you know, I got a website, I started marketing that website. I started to, you know, learn some stuff and I started to go deep into my referral and networking groups. And when spring hit, things just took off. Um, I was able to pay off my student loans and my business loans. I was doing it. I had a van and a trencher. And by the end of that year, I had done, you know, over, over six figures in revenue or over over a hundred thousand in revenue mm -hmm. and even though i was exhausted i was really excited about the future you know but one really unique thing about the pet fence industry <clears throat> is that it's a one-time service right yes your your customer they're only going to get that fence installed once maybe twice down the road if they move or they, and they might do a, a service call down the line or buy a, a product or something, but you're really making a majority of your money on that initial upfront install. And so, yes, yes. so to say it's cutthroat, you know, is an understatement. And I kind of learned that the hard way, but you know, your customer has to have a dog. They have to be into the concept of invisible fencing. Then they have to hear about you. Then they actually have to go with you. So there's a shortage of work where everyone's just trying to get that next job. And so when someone comes out of nowhere and makes a six figure dent in a tiny niche market, looking back, you know, there was a ripple effect. And all of a sudden that following spring, I was on all of my competitors radar, you know, yeah, um, yeah. people started being really nasty to me. People, you know, I would have a legitimate good conversation with, you know, a, potential customer, we'd schedule the job. And then she'd call back 30 minutes later saying, you know what, Shane, we are no longer interested in working with you. Click. Wow. And stuff like that would happen all the time. I had a competitor write the first bad review I got. It. They wrote it as the business and it just got to be like crazy. And some of the stories are so like crazy and nuts that they're not even worth sharing, but dealing with that on a daily basis, it'll start to wear on you, you know, the weird things that people would bring up 
you start thinking like, well, maybe I did do that and I don't remember. It became like this daily battle for my mind and for my heart, you know? Yeah, well, I, uh, I'm sitting here, Shane, and I'm thinking to myself, I, I looked at some of the, the bits and pieces inside the bio about being attacked via, you know, these reviews, and it was it was quite shocking, especially given that it's a legitimate organisation, you're doing things to uh, for the betterment of the, the, the pet industry, as it were. Uh, how was it that you were able to steer your mindset such that it did stay positive through those dark days? Was it How, how, how difficult must that have been? Um, there was some legitimately bad days and you know but i just took that stuff on the chin you know mm -hmm. on a daily basis i think one thing that i did do did do right was making the decision to look inward instead of outward you know yes and i made it my mission that my competitors names and their company would never leave my lips you know and so i was so focused on going inward you know i, I learned how to be really resourceful you know mm -hmm. I, once I was finally able to get that customer, I was the customer experience and referral king. I needed that five-star review. Every aspect of the job was perfect. I needed that referral, that five-star review. And I learned how to master my emotions. When people are being that aggressively rude to you, it'll make you mad. And I kind of learned how to give people grace too. You know, the people who were so nasty, they only knew what they heard. Yeah. Taking that on the chin, you know, in, in the moment and kind of slowly turning it around so that they could see things for exactly where they were. And so, and I would not want to go through any of that ever again. No, <laughs> you know? I look, you know, this is, this is the value that the My Future Business show brings to its audience. You know, we have these up and coming entrepreneurs, existing business owners and book authors, and we all go through struggles, a lot of which, uh, you know, we're talking about here as external forces and as well as our own uh, internal battles with our mindset and how we perceive these messages. Um, it's so powerful for everybody who's on the show today to, to take notice of these things because these are some of the things that you're going to be facing, I guess, in the real world uh, when you go out there. Now, Shane, I'm wondering, when, when you began to get this momentum and you were getting some positive feedback, the business was starting to, to take off, what were you doing differently for that to happen? When that phone call came through, and I knew that, you know, Mrs. Jones had heard all this stuff. I got really good at just cutting through all the noise and all yeah. the riffraff. Yeah. I got really good at just connecting with them and offering huge amounts of relevant value. If they had just moved in from out of town, if they're stressed and they just need it done, whatever that was, if they wanted an in-person quote, you know, over the phone, whatever it was, and offered as much rel relevant value as we could. And I think the other thing was, you know, just being an expert on, on what we did. You know, knowing the, you know, knowing all the cool little tidbits of their particular breed, you know, if they've never been through that process and they feel that you're the expert and you guide them along and, you know, every step of that journey. Yeah, it's, it's funny because there are so many different breeds. I can, I can only imagine <laughs> the type of challenge that presents. You're talking here about creating an experience. Now, how important is it for you to create an experience for your customers? I think a lot of people really value or push convenience, but that's not the be all end all. It's, it's the experience. And, you know, when they see that five-star review and they call, you know, how does it sound and feel when you answer the phone? What is it like when you give them their proposal? What is it like when your employees show up to do the work? You know, are they clean cut, you know, professional on-time employees? And then the back end, what's it like? when you get done doing work for them. So many times as business owners, we're so financially uh, motivated. And in reality, we need to be relationally transactional. Yeah. Following up after the job's done, staying top of mind, so that when you do ask for that referral, or that five-star review, you're going to get it. Yeah. It, it seems to be something that is so important, yet many businesses, not all, but many businesses seem to either ignore or not actually recognize the inherent value uh, of that feedback from, from satisfied customers. In terms of the systems that you have, do you have, uh, I guess, documented systems and, and, and what do they look like for somebody who's just starting out? Well, for someone who's just starting out, really your system is answer the phone when it rings, you know, in yeah. between, that's your system. But one really important thing to do is to 
create space in your business. Step outside of doing the work. Start to delegate stuff so that you can focus on building those systems, your, your sales and marketing systems, your office systems, your employee systems. That's when you're going to start to grow a real company, when you can start to delegate and bring people on and create the systems and automation that's going to make for an amazing customer experience. You know, it's going to send your referrals through the roof. Uh, your go backs are going to go down. Your reviews are going to go up. Yep. And that's what it's all about. Do you find uh, that your systems have obviously matured over time as you've brought on people that may be working with you? How, how is it? How does your business look like today in that respect? You know, I think a lot of business owners are guilty of this, where they want to build like this three or four page, you know, 20 point system for, and it feels good like doing all that work. But one fundamental principle of, of system building is you want to build them for maximum efficiency, focus on quality over quantity. We right. want to build the 10 part crazy automated thing and <laughs> hands off the hands off approach, you know, and it feels sexy, but it it's not prudent. You know, you just want to build them for maximum efficiency and focus on quality over quantity. Yeah, and I'm loving this uh, call, Shane, because, you know, this is one of the touch points that I often draw the, the audience back to is that ability of being, I guess, a bit vulnerable, um, a bit human about how you do this. And I know that in today's world that video is so popular and, and such a powerful medium. How, how do you use uh, video in, in your business? So in, in our sales that Pet Better, mm -hmm. um, it, it has the option to, to do video integration. And so your, your customers can either get a proposal over the phone, in person, or directly from their website. And so to be able to attach a video, whether, it, whether they're giving themselves a quote or you just gave them a quote, putting a face to the company, putting them at ease, kind of telling them maybe your backstory, why you started mm -hmm. your business, that's really powerful and it's going to really separate you in the marketplace as well because when mrs jones is looking at proposals a b c and d there's just something different about yours you know they they know about you and your family and your crew leaders and how you're involved in the community and you know all that stuff so that they're not even thinking about the price you know they're just excited to meet you and to have you on their property you know <laughs> If you're able to properly convey your value, you know, and then you can get really creative with that and the way you follow up when you get done working with them with video integration, videos can really convey a lot about who you are and who your company is. And, and this would be the first in, step in that development of a relationship style marketing, isn't it? Use, the use of video. Yeah, to put a, a face to the company, to kind of put them at ease and kind of explain your, your process and how you do things. That's that's going to really separate you in the marketplace. And it's it's going to, it feels good. It, you know, you want to be that warm, fuzzy blanket because for our particular industry, the pet industry, people's animals are only one step down from their kids. Oh, absolutely. They're an integral part to our family. I can understand how important this is for, for your customers. Now, I always love to talk about the journey, the entrepreneurial journey, the spark, the genesis of a business idea. Where did the idea for Pet Bitter come from? So what happened was I'm, I'm going through all my riffraff with dealing with nonsense daily. What happened was my mom, who is real involved in mission trips and stuff, she, you know, we always go see her after a mission trip and she's always crying and, you know, telling us all these stories. And, but she came back from one, one day and we went and saw her and she, she's like, you know what, Shane, I, I feel like you're going to get involved with software. You, you should start an app for a soft. And she just kept bringing it up. And like, <laughs> I know nothing about anything regarding software stuff or tech stuff. And, but she just kept bringing it up. You know, God really put it on my heart. You, sh you should get involved with software. And I'm like, oh, well, that's cute of her. You know, she's <laughs> <hoping>. thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, but it was in one ear and out the other. And I remember that October, we had had what was far and away the best month we had ever had revenue wise. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Oh, I can do this. Like I can have a real company and I had no avatar to look to. I, I don't know what's possible or, and what's not possible. It's such a tiny niche industry. I just didn't know. And so I was on cloud nine cause I realized I could have a real company. Yes. The following month, 
I'm like, all right, we're going to double our ad spend for Google AdWords and let's go crazy. Let's stock up for winter. And we went from having the best month we'd ever had to having the worst month we'd ever had. And all the while we had never spent more money on marketing. And it wasn't until winter hit that I was able to kind of dive deep into it. And what happened was we were being fraudulently clicked. Oh. Um, and so it's just burning through cash. So not only is our ad spend being lost, but we're missing out on that lost revenue. And to go from being so elated to like, I can't willpower through that type of thing. Do you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely not. I can feel you. I can feel the, you know, the, that, that burden that must have been on your chest at that time. And yeah. And so we had, we hired this, this specialty company out of San Francisco and they, they had the right software to stop the fraudulent clicks. And I'm like, all right, here's my credit card. I'm like, let's go crazy. And it did nothing. We burnt through just thousands of dollars in a matter of days. And, and I'm like, I got to do something, you know, yeah. no willpower and grit could make it through that. And so I had heard about this window washing software for or quoting software for window washers called responsive. It, you know, you tell them how many windows you have and if inside and outside and it, gives X amount of quotes and, and then on the back end, it follows up with you. And I'm like, well, that seems cute. You know, I'll, I should look at that and try that out. And I went to them and when I got a glimpse into, when I scratched the surface of what that could do. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I, I got really resourceful. I would see like something, you know, little, and I would just kind of dive deep into that because I needed, I needed to do that on a daily basis to survive for my business. And so seeing that and scratching the surface of that, I went to them and was like, I want you guys to build this for me for pet fencing. And I want you to build it only for me. And they said, no. <laughs> and I, I said, please. And they said, no, I said, pretty please. <laughs> so I somehow got finagled my way into a meeting with the owner and we hit it off and he proposed the idea to me of them building a, a pet fencing or invisible fence module and me basically buying it off of them and owning it and further developing it and, and having it not only to myself, but also to use for other companies in, in the pet industry. Mm -hmm. And when we started to implement that the following spring, I took that winter and just, I weaponized that thing. I <laughs> it was my machete and when spring, <laughs> I finally was able to bring some people on in the first three months of that spring. We literally doubled our revenue from the prior spring. We use the thing called mile IQ that tracks the miles that you drive. Yep. We were doing double the revenue, but we were driving way less miles because we weren't driving out to every single new prospect to oh, give them a course. Yeah. Not only were we making way more money, we were spending way less in gas and way less time in driving out. And then we cut our marketing budget in half just to be able to keep up. So the combination of automating our sales process, along with me getting out of the field and doing only sales stuff and, and customer service stuff, we literally doubled. And sometimes the smallest iteration, the smallest implementation will, will change everything for you overnight. And as a business owner, there's, there's a lot of rainy days. And uh, I don't think you ever hit a point where you feel like you've arrived there's always just something to do you know there's always stuff going on but there was a point in time where dealing with all the the stuff you know hearing all the negativity and, and all this nonsense like mm -hmm. i never felt safe like i'd have a good day where there was no craziness you didn't feel that you know you didn't get that crazy call at 9 a.m and it's like okay this is over with i'm through and and then the next day you get that nastiness and uh, I, ne yeah. I never felt safe. I never felt like I could take a deep breath. Is this, is this that, that point about being comfortable with being uncomfortable? By making that decision to, to stay in the fire and to dig deep daily, one day out of the blue, I just was like, I'm done with this. Like no, yeah. nothing changed. The, the bad reviews kept coming, the, the nastiness, but I, I knew I'd made it through something and nothing had changed internally or externally. I just knew that I was past that and I, I just felt different all of a sudden. And so 
making the decision to look inward and, and to embrace that pain, that's a good thing. Pain's a good thing. And it, it's going to sharpen you and hone you. And you're going to acquire all the skills that you need to win. Yeah, it's it's an amazing journey. And this is the the essence as to why the My Future Business Show exists is to share these stories of struggle and success and the tools and the things that you go through. Um, so if everybody who was on the call today is, t is listening to this, take it in and actually take it to heart because this, this story makes a difference. Um, now, with your business, Shane, what's coming up next for you? Well, right now, um... We're, we're doing a bunch of updates with, with Pet Better and just building out modules for the rest of the, the pet service industry. So dog walking, dog training, uh, pet waste pickup, you know, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so as people get on board and see the power of automation and, and what they can do, it really is a game changer for a lot of these small family owned businesses, you know, and a lot of them have families, they, they have employees and having the ability to drive revenue in a big way and automate your entire sales process, mm -hmm. it, you'll change your life very quickly. So not only are we building out for the rest of the pet industry, our, our big pursuit right now is trying to integrate with, with CRMs, you know, and yes. the CRMs yeah. that the pet service company is utilizing, you know, invoicing and, and scheduling and employee report and all that stuff. We want to be the sales and bidding tool uh, that works the front end of your business and your sales process. It's got obviously a lot of things to come. Now, if people want to find you and work with you, Shane, where are they going to go? People can find us uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn. Thank you very much for that. Now, everybody who is on the call today, uh, lots of gold on this call take down some notes, follow up, and I will be making sure that the links back to Shane are made available below this post. Shane, thank you so very much for spending some time with me on the My Future Business Show today. Hey, thanks for having me, Rick. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends, and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.